Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel, Adam here, and today I'm going to be showing you some of the biggest mistakes that I see DIYers especially making when it comes to doing their own wiring, and especially when it comes to making their connections between wires or their splicing of wires. I'm gonna show you the most common mistakes, what they look like, show you the ways that they should be done or more recommended ways of doing them. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So first I have two solid core wires that I wanna to splice together. And this is probably the most common combination that there is. You may from time to time have solid core to stranded, however, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So the most common mistake that I see most DIYers make is they'll take their two wires that they're gonna be joining together, they'll put them together, and they'll just take a wire nut, put it on top, and then just tighten it down, like so. And then this is where one of the most debatable subjects come into play. And I've seen mostly from DIYers debating this, but I've also seen some electricians debating it as well, as far as, is this good enough? Is it good enough just to put two wires together and then put a wing nut over the top of it? And my answer is, it depends. And I'll get to that in just a moment. But let's go to the code book and see what the code book says. So according to the NEC 110.3b, it says that equipment that is listed, labeled, or both shall be installed and used in accordance with any instructions included in the listing or labeling. So what they're basically saying is you are to follow the instructions or the recommendations of whatever is written on whatever product you are using. So let's check out the packaging. So no doubt, many of you have seen this packaging. Ideal is one of the top producers of wire nuts. So let's turn it over here to the back for the instructions. And as you can see here, they've got a diagram here as to how it should look. And then they also have the instructions down here. Now, when we get to the pre-twisting, which is number three, what it says is pre-twisting is acceptable, but not required. So to answer your question, as far as code goes, it is not required to pre-twist. However, this is still wrong in my opinion because we're supposed to look at the labeling. And what does the label show? It shows putting the wire nut on with the wires at the same length. But over here, it shows to where they twist it so much to where you can actually see the wiring underneath of the wire nut twisting. Because what that's gonna do is it's gonna guarantee that the wires underneath of the wire nut are also twisting. But this is what I see the majority of the time. There is no twisting underneath of the nut and it's just in there like this to where when you go to push this into the back of the box, it's not hard for this to rotate even just a slight revolution over to the left. And then all the wires can just fall out like that without hardly any pulling on them. So if you are not going to pre-twist, what needs to happen is they need to be at the same length and then twist that wire nut on. And until you can get to where you can't twist it anymore, keep going even further. You wanna start seeing it to start twisting down below the wire nut as well down in this area. All right, so as you can see, this would be much more acceptable because now we know that we have a good connection underneath of the wire nut. And we also know that while this is all intertangled here together, it's much less likely to be able to be pulled out or vibrate out over time. And as you can see underneath, we have a nice joint there but this is not the way that I even recommend doing, and this is not the way that the majority of electricians recommend splicing wires together. The vast majority of electricians will tell you to do this, to take your two wires and line them up with each other, and then take a pair of linesman pliers, and then you're just going to start by pre-twisting those wires together. And now, as you can see, I've got a nice joint here. Then after those are twisted together, you'll just take your linesman pliers and snip off the very top to make everything perfectly equal. Now that all that's together, that's when they will take their wire nut and they will put it over the wires and then twist it down, like so. So we've got the nice braiding that's going on underneath of the wire nut again. But the reason that a lot of them advise doing it this way is before you put the wire nut on, you can see your joint. You can see that you have a nice joint where the wiring is making nice contact with each other. The wire nut itself is basically serving as an addition to the connection that's going on between these two wires. And it's also containing the tops of the wires so that you can't get shocked and also so that there's no ground faults like if you were using a metal box or something like that. 
but you'll see when I take the wire nut off, the wires still stay together. They don't come apart. And so you really have very, very little to no risk of there being any issues with these two losing connection or arcing. All right, so now let's talk about connecting a solid core wire to a stranded wire. So first I need to cut some of the insulation off of my wire. If you take your wire strippers and if you look at your wire strippers, you'll see where it says solid and it also says over here on the other side, it says stranded. That means that these are the numbers you wanna follow for stranded. These are what you wanna follow for solid. This is 14 gauge. So we wanna put it underneath of that number 14 on the stranded side. So just put it underneath of there, take off about three quarters of an inch and there's our stranded wire. All right, so again, very similar to the solid core to solid core, what people will do is they'll just take their stranded, put it up next to their solid core, take their wire nut, put it underneath of the wire nut and just spin it on. All right, so one thing that happens a lot of times when you do it this way and you just put them up next to each other is if you look underneath of this wire nut, you can see that the stranded wire actually dropped down from the solid core wire. So we know that the solid core wire is seated higher up in the wire nut than the stranded wire, which could point to not having a very good connection here between the stranded wire and the solid core. And also what can tend to happen, especially using stranded wire, is it's not gonna hold as well in a wire nut. It didn't take a whole lot of force to pull that out. And as you can see in this particular case, just like with the solid core, when you don't turn it enough, we barely got that stranded wire to start wrapping around this solid core wire. But let's say that you did think that you did it right and you went ahead and you pre-twisted this and then you went and put your wire nut in on top and you really tightened, you made sure that you tightened it down like so. Well, what can still happen is it doesn't take a whole lot of force. It'll take more, but not a whole lot. And out comes the stranded wire. Now, as you can see, it was starting to do a much better job of curling around that solid core wire. So that connection probably would have been okay, but it still was not curled nearly enough around that solid core wire. And again, a lot of it has to do with when they were put underneath of the wire nut, you tried to put them up equally, this stranded dropped down below, so it did not seat up in the top of the wire nut well enough to really get a hold of it and bite into that stranded to really wrap it around the solid core wire. And I see this most often on light fixtures because a lot of times your light fixtures come with your stranded wire. And of course your Romex that's running through your walls is always solid core. So when I'm connecting a stranded wire to a solid core wire, what I like to do is I like to make sure that I have a little bit more of my stranded wire exposed than my solid core wire. And the reason for that is this is gonna be doing the vast majority of the wrapping around this wire over here. Now I can see the argument a little bit more for not pre-twisting these as the wire nut, as long as you get it seated up in there, is gonna do a really good job of wrapping it around it. However, I still recommend pre-twisting the solid core and the stranded together. And one thing to note is you do wanna make sure not to tighten down too much when you're pre-twisting on the stranded because what can happen is these stranded wires are kind of flimsy and they could be easy to break off. And therefore you would make your wiring a little bit weaker. Just gonna clean it up a little bit. And so as you can see, there's a nice bond between the strands and the solid core. The strands are completely encompassing the solid core wire, but I still definitely wanna add my wire nut on. So I'll just take my wire nut push it all the way up into the top till it seats, and then just really tighten these down. And I really wanna make sure that it's nice and tight. I've got this nice curling going on down below. And when I go to pull it out, there's no pulling that out of that wire nut. So I know I've got a nice connection underneath of it. It's all seated nicely up in the spring that's in the top of these wire nuts, which helps to hold everything together, bite into the wiring, and also it's conductive to help pass the power along. Also, really quickly, if you're finding this video to be helpful and you're finding it's helping to splice up your life, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below to let me know that it's being helpful for you and it also helps to spread out to other people so maybe it can help them as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. So there is another product that can be used aside from a wire nut that I can get behind, especially when connecting solid core 
to stranded. It kind of takes away the mystery again as to whether or not you're going to have a good connection. And it kind of is dummy proof. And that's this product right here. This is a Wago 221. And these are basically splicing devices where you put your wires into these holes right here. You've got this lever right here that basically when it's up, you can put your wiring in and then flip it down, holds the wiring into place. And then on the bottom side right here, this little piece of metal here, this is then what makes the connection between this wire and this wire. And of course they make bigger ones than this. But for these in particular, I do think that these are a fairly good option when trying to make a connection between a stranded and a solid core wire. Now there is a following for these where they've made it pretty clear that a lot of them believe that Wagos are really the only way to go on all installations. I personally can't get behind that. I think that there's a different tool for a different job. And if you guys would like for me to make a video comparing this to say they've also got these push connections that you just push the wiring into, or of course also wire nuts. If you guys would like for me to make a video comparing all of these and showing what installations I think that they all work best in, leave a comment down in the comment section and I'll be sure to make that. Let me get my wiring. What I wanna do is I wanna strip off maybe about a half an inch off of each of these. I just kinda of like to twist the strands on these together just to make them stronger. All right, so now I've got my solid core here. I've got my stranded here and I've got my Wago. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up on both of these levers on the Wago so that they're in the upright position. I'm gonna take my solid core first. It really doesn't matter which one first. Push it all the way in until it's seated. You can turn it up on the opposite side and you can see that my lead is clearly all the way through touching that metal. So now what I can do is I can just clamp down on it by putting that lever down on where the wire is. And if I give it a good pull, as you can see, it's not gonna come out. So now I've still got my other lever that's up, so I'll take my stranded wire and then put it up into that other hole underneath of that lever. I like to always flip them over to make sure that they're seated correctly, they're all the way up. And then here at the bottom, you can see that there's no insulation up underneath of the metal, so we know we're gonna have a good connection. So now that they're seated correctly, I'll just flip down that lever. And as you can see, they aren't coming out of there at all. So super simple device. They certainly have their place. Again, I'll have links down in the description down below where you can pick these up along with all the other products that I have shown you in this video to make your splices. So while I hope this video was really helpful for you, I'm gonna put some links right over here of some other electrical projects that I've done in the past. Feel free to check those out. And if this video was helpful for you, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And of course, if you have any questions or comments at all, leave those down in the comments down below. And I'll catch you all in the next one.